Hello friends, welcome back to Indo Tales from Live. In this episode, we are going to talk and demonstrate deep margin elevation. Yes, the term deep margin elevation is something that I've been asked explanation quite a number of times by many. So, what exactly it is and what is the benefit of doing? So, luckily, we finished a patient just now on whom I performed the final bonding procedure, and we have documented all the steps involved deep margin elevation from the beginning so I'm just going to show that in this video at the end of this video you will all be able to understand the need for deep margin elevation in cases with subgenital caries especially when you're going for these bonded partial biomimetic restorations. Basically deep margin elevation is nothing but making your margin supragingival whenever it is subgingival in your tooth preparation. It's especially done for indirect restorations that are adhesively bonded. So the advantages is that by making my margin supragingival, it is very easy to record the margins both during the impressions or intraoral scanning. And it's much more easy to isolate the tooth so that we can achieve a much predictable bonding for these indirect restorations which demand very good isolation. And it's also very easy to remove the excess cement and also prevent the excess cement from being pushed gingivally or subgingivally. So you can see a, a clinical scenario over here. We have the preoperative situation where it's a deep class 2 which is subgingival following my endo. Now I have done a deep margin elevation and made my gingival seat supragingival and following which we make the final preparation and impression so that my final restoration is bonded onto a supragingival margin. So this is the clinical scenario of the same case. Now do all indirect restorations require deep margin elevation? The answer is no. Every time your margins are already supragingival, we don't need to elevate the margin. It's as simple as that. So you can see a scenario here where the margins of this preparation 360 degrees are supragingival and hence we don't need to do deep margin elevation here. Another situation following endo, you can see the gingival seat is pretty supra gingival. Even following removal of uh, the unsupported enamel over there, this is my final preparation and still it's supra gingival. I'm able to record the margins pretty well even without elevating it and most importantly, I'm able to isolate by placing rubber dam and no, invert my dam so that even without my deep margin elevation, I'm able to isolate well. So these are cases where we will not require deep margin elevation. So basically deep margin elevation is performed in cases where they're like, which are very difficult to restore, like in this particular scenario where it's a very uh, challenging case for restoring there is a deep subgingival class 2 caused by the impacted third molar and following the disimpaction we elevated the margins using composite and then my margins of the restorations are placed supragingivally and then the impressions are made which is able to give me a predictable bondable scenario and you can very well see that reflecting in the outcome this is a particular case with two year follow up you can see the deep margins that are elevated with composite pretty intact even after two years. So this particular scenario was done with zirconia and you can see the margins, marginal integrity maintained. But off late what I recommend and uh, uh, recommend people to do is just select Lithium disilicate or Emax for these kind of bonded restorations because the bond strength is much more predictable. The properties of this lithium disilicate are much similar to enamel and the aesthetics is also very good. So this is a retreatment of my own case. This is a uh, patient which I treated two to three years back where I had given a zirconia on lay which had displaced. And the patient reported late to me and you can see that now the margins have gone subgingival and also there is a gingival overgrowth. 
So every time you have a gingival overgrowth, we need to understand that we need to do a procedure called deep margin acquisition even before you perform the deep margin elevation. So deep margin acquisition is nothing but uh, removing off the excess gingiva which, which is similar to gingivoplasty or gingivectomy and it can be performed with either lasers or cartery or even your obturation pin. I'm using cartery here because uh, it's much more quicker and both cartery and lasers do not bleed which allows me to perform the deep margin elevation procedure in the single visit and even blunt burst used in high speed hand pieces without water can also perform this deep margin acquisition. So following this now we can see that I have exposed the gingival seat that is subgingival and now I need to elevate it. So in one of our previous endo tail we had already mentioned about the choice of matrix that I prefer for deep margin elevation. Yes, it's the saddle matrix and a good wedge and for elevating the margin the material of choice is composite resin and my personal choice is the bulk fill flowable composite which is much more easy and predictable because it has the self leveling property and in this demonstration we are going to see SDR from Densplay though we know that there are other brands as well that have bulk fill flowables. So, here the isolation is going to be performed only by the matrix band and the wedge for the composite resin and it's very important for you to make sure your matrix adapts very nicely to your gingival seat like this and then you can perform the selective etching of just the enamel in the gingival seat and following that using uh, universal adhesive and then you can see I uh, added SDR flow over the floor of the pulp chamber and the gingival seat and I add a little extra than it's required which I can later trim it down. So you can see that a little bit of contact has also been developed using this deep margin technique but since the indirect restorations are known to give you much better contacts and contours I do not want to elevate the margin to the point of contact so I will break the contact now with the contact breaking burr and that's it. My margins are now elevated and I'm confirming it with a radiograph to check if my margins are elevated smoothly and this is after my deep margin elevation and after done my preparation, this is my final prep. You can see now I have a good supra gingival margin from the pre-operative condition and which is going to give me a much predictable margin for my restoration and you can see here my intraoral scanner is able to pick up the supra gingival margin much easily the same will go with in my impression methods as well so here's my final digital impression and also send my shade to the lab and now comes the most important part is the importance of temporization every time you're done a deep margin elevation especially a gingivectomy. So here we have applied a separating medium over the composites that I've used for deep margin elevation so that uh, my temporary composite does not bond to it and then I have placed a temporary which will also hold my gingiva from growing back and once my restoration my final restoration has arrived from the lab now we are going to perform the final bonding and on the day of bonding you can see the gingival health is much better and the gingival margins have been placed or held exactly where it was with the help of my temporary and now I am able to isolate easily for me which is a important factor for these bonded adhesive restorations and then I am able to bond it with good isolation and you can see the nice adaptation to your bonding and this is my post-op radiograph so this is the immediate post-op radiograph that I have I mean this is my immediate post-op clinical picture and you can see a slight difference uh, it's not 
exactly blending with the natural tooth that because of the dehydration of the natural tooth after isolation with rubber dam for quite some time so this will be all right by the time the patient comes for the follow-up which i'll share it with you now so this is where we started and we have finished with and this is the one week post-op and now you can see the health of the gingiva getting better and better one week later and this is the comparison of the pre-op the immediate post-op and the one week post-op and after one week you can see the shade blending very well with the natural tooth because of the tooth rehydrating again and this was the immediate post-op you can see the interdental papilla that was lost because of our gingivectomy and this is just one week and we can already see the papilla regenerating and generally it takes two to four weeks time for the papilla to get back to its normal shape so thank you for watching and see you all soon in our next video